Hi, I'm Salvation and today I want to introduce you to a game called Atlas Reactor. Atlas Reactor was available in early access for some time already, but recently it got released as a free-to-play game and so I had a look because the concept was looking interesting. It is a turn-based strategy 4 on 4 PvP game. It was often compared to a team-based XCOM as multiplayer PvP version. At first glance the starting screen looks very much like a MOBA like League of Legends or Heroes of the Storm with lots of different characters to choose from. The current roster of 25 characters is really varied in terms of playstyle and looks and as it is a free to play game it is basically guaranteed that we will see new characters on a regular basis. Each character has 4 abilities and 1 ultimate ability and the HP pools can vary a lot between them. All these abilities can also be customized a little bit by choosing mods for them. Those mods will change how the ability works, like applying a buff to you when you use it or extend the range of an ability. Each character also has 3 one-time use abilities per match and those are the same for all characters. Currently there are 3 abilities to choose from for each of the 3 one-time use ability slots. The characters are divided into three categories, Firepower, Frontline and Support. Firepower is, as you would have probably guessed already, the main damage dealers. Frontliners are more tanky with higher HP pools, abilities to heal or shield and crowd control effects. Supports can heal or shield others as well as themselves and most of them also have a choice of buffs and debuffs available. There is no fixed team composition and most of the support and frontliners can also deal good damage when played well. I have to say that I like the art style they went for, it reminds me a bit of Borderlands and the most of the models have also pretty nice details with a good variety in styles. The important thing of course is the gameplay so let's jump into a match and have a look. As I already said, the main catch about the game is that it is turn based and not real time. Everyone plans the actions I want to take and then confirms the action. If everyone has the orders locked in, the turn will be played. Each turn has four phases, the prep phase, dash phase, blast and movement phase. Actions will be calculated in that order, in each phase all actions happen simultaneously. Most of the time you can make one action and move or move twice, but most characters have three actions that can be used in addition to another action. The preparation phase has mostly shielding, healing and damage boosting abilities, buffs or debuffs. As the blast phase, where most of the shooting takes place, happens before the movement phase, it is really important to get into the right position at the end of the turn. If you don't move or move to a bad spot, you might end up with no one to attack in the next turn because everyone was moving away or you end up getting focused because you stand in the middle of everyone without cover. If that happens, your best bet is a dash move in the next turn. Dash moves will happen before the blast phase so you can use them to dodge attacks. Most characters will have one dash as an ability with a pretty high cooldown from 4 to 6 turns and all characters have a one time use dash that teleports for a small distance. Using abilities and damaging enemies will also fill your energy bar that can be used for our ultimate ability. Those will de deal good damage in a large area most of the time but some supports of frontline characters also have shielding or healing ultimates. The game is won by the team that first gets 5 kills. If that does not happen in 20 rounds, then most kills after 20 rounds will win. When I started playing the game, I liked it a bit, but I found that there wasn't enough choices on each turn, as you often would end up with only one good target in front of you, and then you would just shoot it with the ability that deals the most damage. As I played more, the game grew a lot on me, because knowing the abilities of the others and my own better movement made choices more interesting. There are still situations where it's very clear what you should do or where you don't have anything you could really do, but as you play more you see that this is mostly a result of the choices made in the turn before that turn. Most characters have a pretty unique playstyle and with the amount of characters most players should find at least one or two that they enjoy playing. So let's talk about the free to play model. First things first when it comes to that topic, there is no pay to win. As a free player you have a weekly rotation of 6 characters that you can play. You get one character of your choice after the first 10 matches and then you can buy other characters with in-game currency. 
for real money you can buy the all freelancer pack that will give you access to all characters forever, including new ones as soon as they are released. I have to say that I really like this offer in these kind of games. If you like the game enough you can buy it and it turns the game from a free to play into a normal game with all future content being free for you. There are also more expensive packs that include the same deal and some skins on top. There are also loot boxes in game and they include skins, taunts, GG boosts and items to customize your profile banner. You get the boxes for leveling your character and account and you can also buy them. Buying them is not a problem as they don't provide any in-game advantages. The GG boost is a little twist on the normal XP boost that most free-to-play games of this kind offer. If you have one, you can click it after the match and get 30% increased XP and credits and all other players also get 10% more. You can also use a friend invite code to test the game. This will unlock all characters for one week for you. It's a really good offer in my opinion as one week is plenty of time to find out if you like the game and what characters you enjoy the most. If you start the game with a friend you can just use each other's code. If you are starting alone feel free to use my code that you will find in the video description. The last thing I should talk about is a publisher. Atlas Reactor is made by Tryon Worlds, which is known for destroying games with bad servers and pay to win shops once they start losing players. This is indeed a very real risk, but as the game got just released, there is plenty of time to enjoy it in its current form. But you should keep that fact in mind if you think about dropping lots of money on the game. As the game is free to play, there's really nothing that should stop you from just testing it to see if you like it. With a friend code, you even get to test all the characters for free. For me, it definitely was not clicking after the first few matches, but the more I played the game, the more I liked it. And in my books, it's a good thing to say about a game. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. Also, let me know what you think about Atlas Reactor and if you would like to see more content about it on my channel. I'm Salvation, see you in my next video. Victory! <sighs> Gotta love this city. Land of opportunity.